Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our five minute histories videos. And today we're gonna to talk about the building behind me. Uh, a number of you have emailed in or called in uh, asking just what is this building? You can see it if you've ever biked or walked uh, on the Jones Falls Trail, just north of the Baltimore Streetcar Museum. And if you're one of the very few people who actually go the speed limit on Interstate 83, you can catch a glimpse of it uh, on your right hand side just before the 28th Street exit. So if you're not going a million miles an hour, um, stay in the right hand lane and, uh, and you, can, you can catch a glimpse from Interstate 83. Um, it is, of course, the Ma and Pa Railroad Roundhouse, the Maryland and Pennsylvania Railroad, uh, the wonderful moniker Ma and Pa. Um, and it was a roundhouse, used as a railroad roundhouse, uh, the same function as its better known counterpart, the B&O Roundhouse, um, down uh, on Pratt Street in the Holland's Market neighborhood. Um, instead, But instead of a roundhouse, this maybe was a half roundhouse, but it served the same function. Um, the B&O building was round, or really 22 size. I guess, but pretty much round. Um, this one is sort of like a half circle, um, but same function. You would pull a railroad car into one of the slots uh, on the outer edge of the circle, and then the locomotive, say, would be in the middle on a big uh, table, and the table would turn until it lined up with another one of the slots, and then you'd hitch up the new car and pull away, and out you would go. So the same basic uh, train car switching function as a, as a full roundhouse. Um, the Ma and Pa got its start in 1901, with the merger of two older railroads. And those of you who are railroad uh, buffs and railroad historians will, will know these terms. Um, if you're like me and are sort of low on the learning curve for railroad history, I need to use my cheat sheet. Um, but one was the Baltimore and Lehigh Railroad. Um, it was founded uh, actually even earlier in 1881 as the Baltimore and Delta Railroad. Um, the Baltimore Delta Railroad got its start uh, pa carrying passengers from Baltimore to Towson. And if you can think of what we now think of as a, uh, a such a short uh, distance, uh, back then it apparently uh, warranted a railroad, uh, a railroad ride. Um, it eventually expanded up into Delta, Pennsylvania, hence Baltimore and Delta, um, uh, where there's the great slate quarry. I think we actually covered that in a prior video on Franklin Square and Baltimore's brownstone houses. Um, so that was one railroad. The second railroad was the York Southern Railroad, and it got its start in 1882, I believe, as the Peach Bottom Railroad. And if you know where the Peach Bottom nuclear plant is now, um, on the Susquehanna River, maybe I'd say 40 miles or so north of Haverty Grace, that's Peach Bottom. Um, so this railroad got its start uh, carrying people and freight between Peach Bottom and Delta and Red Lion, Pennsylvania. Red Lion, there was a, uh, an enormous furniture factory there that uh, needed people and then shipped out furniture. Um, and uh, as a total aside, uh, you, if you've been watching these videos, you know that I am a total, total Baltimore and Maryland uh, fan, but I have to say that Pennsylvania has the greatest names of towns of all. Peach Bottom, Red Lion, um, and then my favorite is in Lancaster County, uh, a town called Bird in Hand. And if that doesn't make you smile, I don't know what will. Um, so these two railroads, though, merged in 1901 and formed the Ma and Pa. And they also upgraded to standard railroad gauge. They had been sort of narrow gauge. And this allowed them to haul freight as well as passengers. Um, and they were competing with none other than the Pennsylvania Railroad, uh, which operated uh, the Northern Central Railway Line. That was one of its divisions, the NCR. Um, some of you may know the NCR Trail today in Baltimore County. You've hiked or biked, uh, walked or biked that. Um, uh, its competitor now, the Ma and Pa uh, Hiking and Biking Trail that goes up through Hartford County and Bel Air and Falston. Um, but the Ma and Pa got going and hauled people and freight from Baltimore to York primarily. Um, uh, and uh, some of the freight it hauled was again the, the furniture out of Red Lion, uh, the slate out of Delta. And apparently every morning it picked up over a thousand pounds of, uh, of milk uh, in Falston, Maryland. Um, and that section of the line became known as the Milky Way. So another colorful railroad term here. Um, it was doing well. The Ma and Pa was doing well until the 
the Great Depression, um, which took a hit on both the passenger and freight traffic. And in 1954, the railroad took another big hit when the U.S. Postal Service canceled a contract that it had been using to uh, haul U.S. mail up and down. Um, and that was the same year that it discontinued passenger service. So the last passenger train ran in 1954. It still ran freight. Um, in fact, the Indiana limestone used to make uh, the Cathedral of Mary Our Queen in 1956 came through on the Ma and Pa. But by 1958, um, even that had dried up and uh, the Maryland line par portion um, was shut down. Um, the, the Pennsylvania portion kept operating until the 1980s. I think 1984, the furniture factory in Red Lion closed and that was the impetus to shut down almost all of the rest of the line in Pennsylvania. Um, Baltimore City purchases, back, back to the roundhouse, um, with the line no longer running, Baltimore City buys the roundhouse in 1960 and uses it to store road salt, um, which was not so good. We are right on the banks of the Jones Falls and the salt was leaching into the Jones Falls and then carried into the Chesapeake Bay. Um, today, Baltimore City's Department of Transportation um, uses the building for uh, truck storage and maintenance. I think you can see and maybe even hear that going on behind me right now. Um, and the building itself though, uh, although the city maintains trucks here, unfortunately it has not maintained the building, which is in pretty rough shape. Um, but the building was made by railroad engineers um, and it was over-engineered. What do you expect from folks who built great uh, uh, tunnels and bridges over streams and through valleys? And so it still is pretty solid despite the holes in the roof and the, uh, some of the structural um, uh, damage due to the salt. Um, and maybe that will be its savior. We don't know what the city has in store for it, if anything, uh, but it's over engineering has bought it at least a few more years for hopefully all of us to figure out what to do. So I'll leave it at that and say thanks and we'll see you next time.